Guys, Pico 8 has new colors! Hmm. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. I'm back. Welcome back. Um, so, a lot of things happened in my life. I've been gone for a while because I've been moving to a different country. I'm here in China right now in some girls' living room. What used to be some girls' living room. Long story, anyway. I moved into China and I, um, I'm in a city called Fuzhou and um, so we, I kind of like took a month to kind of like settle in here a little bit to understand to get my bearings straight and so forth. Uh, not quite there yet but you know this is like, like kind of like my first video that I wanted to shoot um, because while I was moving something amazing happened. Uh, so I've been actually literally in the plane and I was trying to get like on, on, on airplane Wi-Fi, uh, not on airplane, like on airport Wi-Fi to kind of like get all the scoops because apparently some people discovered a new function in Pico 8 that was sleeping there and waiting all along that Zep, the creator of Pico 8, told nobody anything about. And now it's in the open and now we know that Pico 8 has an ability to display more or let's say the color palette of Pico 8 has been expanded by 16 additional colors. So now we have 32 colors to pick from instead of 16 colors. And it's a bit of a hidden feature because if you look at Pico 8 it's still the 16 colors that we're familiar with. So um, it seems like nothing changed. But the ideas or the fun thing about, about how this was kind of like implemented is that it's kind of like a secret command and it's kind of like, um, I think, mirroring uh, or and trying to evoke this similar ways in which old hardware used to implement additional feature for this. Like you have to be, you know, in the know to understand how things work. So um, maybe just to explain how this works first, because, you know, again, I was like on the airport and I was like, wait a minute, I tried it and it didn't work. Like what's wrong here? Uh, I'm going to step you through the process of how to get the new colors to work. Then we're going to look at some implementations and uh, some cool tricks you can do with them. And at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about the controversy surrounding this topic. So I prepared some stuff. Uh, let's, let's run this first. Okay, so this is a program that just displays all of the colors in the palette on the screen the way it is displayed in the Pico 8 editor, the way it is displayed here, right? And it's like a very simple program. We have an empty init, we have an empty update, and there's a draw function that um, clears the screen and then it loops through all, all colors 0 to 15 and then using some variables to kind of figure out where the square is of the individual um, color and then fills the square with the color with C. Okay, so the way we access those new hidden colors is we add 128 to the color number. And I did that and I was disappointed because if you do this, you go like, okay, PAL, that's the function to switch colors, to kind of like take a color and replace it with a different color in your color palette. So you go color pal and let's say, let's take, um, let's take this yellow here, that's color 10, right? So you're gonna go pal 10, 10 plus 128, that was the trick, right? Uh, and then let's run this. And we can see it didn't work. What's the deal? The yellow is still a yellow, it didn't change any against any different color. Well, the trick is you have to do also a comma one here in a PAL. So I think we did it in some other tutorials, but basically PAL accepts um, two to three uh, arguments. The first argument is the color that you're replacing. The second argument, that's this one, is the color that you're re re replacing this color with. And the last argument, it can be omitted, um, but if it's set to one, it means that this palette change applies not only to what you're going to draw, but also everything that's already on the screen. It kind of like do, does like a complete replacement. If this is zero, it only applies to the next stuff that you will draw. And this secret color thing cannot be accessed this way. You have to do it a comma one at the end. And if you do that, that, you will see that the yellow has been replaced with a luscious new uh, lime green that's the new color kind of like thing happening here okay so basically each color of the standard color uh, pico 8 palette has kind of like a dark version now you know like a dark dark world um, 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 version of it like an evil uh, dark twin so to speak and the evil dark twin of the st uh, standard yellow is a lime green which is exciting i like we have more more green 
tones. So I have a copy and paste thing that we can we can do here real quick. Um, there's multiple ways in which you can pull this off, but basically something we can do here right now is something like uh, for i equals zero to fifteen. We're gonna loop through all the colors. Do kind of like how we do it downstairs, and then we're gonna go pal i i plus one hundred twenty eight one. And run this. You will see we will get <clears throat> all of the dark versions of each individual color. Now, some of the I'm I didn't do an analysis. I'm not a color mathematician, theoretician, I'm not, I have no idea of this. I will post some analysis that I think Iron posted on Twitter. Um, I'm not sure what I'm getting out, but it looks beautiful. I'm not sure what I'm getting out of this analysis. Um, but just like some my personal observations, I kind of like that we, like generally this palette is darker and uh, reddish air, like warmer colors and darker colors. Uh, we have a lot of greens because the yellow changed into lime green, so we had a lot of greens that which allow us maybe to do like um, Game Boy style kind of like palette colors. Uh, we have a lot of different brownish tones, that's really nice because I've been struggling with this a little bit when I was working on My Chan Sweet Buns to get like, get like a reddish colors. Um, and there's also some uh, down, down in the lower uh, row, there is some additional like uh, skin colors, which I think also will allow us to do more interesting stuff when we read characters. I'm not really sure. It's just exciting to have like more things to play around with, to experiment with. There is particular, some particular colors which I'm really fond of. I love the 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 um, white, the uh, the white that has turned into like this 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 dirty yellow. That's 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 something I really enjoy. I, again, I really like the lime green as well. Some good stuff in here. Good. Now, in addition to that, you might have noticed something. So I run this right. And I press escape and then it switches back to the original color palette. That's because, I mean, that makes sense. We kind of like messed around with the color palette, but once the program is finished, it will revert back to the original um, Pico 8 colors. However, uh, Zep has published some hot, hot tweets um, where you can use uh, a, f a function to prevent this resetting from happening. So you can basically switch to this dark color palette, for example, and keep it like that forever. <gasps> let's, let, let's look at how this works. So uh, the function is poke. I have to, I have to type this up. 0x, 5f, 1, wait, no, 5f, 2e, there we go, 2e, comma, 1. I think this is the right one. Is it the right one? Yep, it's the right one. So um, poke, um, for all of you not in the know, see now everything is dark. Uh, for you people um, not in the know, poke is like a way to manipulate the memory of, of, um, of Pico 8. And apparently if you manipulate the memory in the right place, uh, it prevents it from resetting the color palette after the program is run. This allows you to change the color editor into this weird, uh, into a different color palette. So now, for example, we see this dark color palette in here because all of the colors have been permanently exchanged now um, by, to, into this, this dark color palette. Oh, crazy, crazy. I love it. So good. Now, for you guys who don't like this, there's multiple ways, ways of doing this as well. I, I've seen some people do, for example, this version. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So not using the palette, but instead using the poke just to manipulate the uh, memory addresses for different color palettes directly using a poke. That's doable. Um, there is a bit of a problem here, I think, because um, um, this actually costs one token more. <laughs> so I, I'm sorry, you're out. So PAL is apparently more efficient in this way. Some person, uh, some people also posted this version, which is a kind of hot because it's a new function that we had, poke4, I think that was also implemented in a most recent version, uh, where it's like you can poke, you can change a lot of memory addresses at the same time. Um, so basically these four commands will do the same. We'll also do a switch into the dark mode. Um, let us remove this. I, 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 don't, I don't like my editor switching to dark mode. That's weird. Um, so this again does the same. This should be faster than going through the loop because I, the loop is, I think, uh, a bit slower. Um, but it also uses more tokens. So uh, I don't know. Personally, I like this one the most because it kind of like gives it more, more, most control and it seems to be the most uh, token efficient. It is the probably slowest one. So keep that in mind.
Okay, so now with this newly discovered thing, uh, we can do interesting stuff. Uh, we can, for example, look at our old games and see how they look in new uh, dark color palette. And there have been some really interesting uh, things to copy and paste that I saw on, on Twitter, which I want to share with you. This is from Neil Popham, and he posted this, this little uh, copy and paste piece. Um, so it looks like this. Okay, so I think it might be better understandable what's happening here. So this basically adds a new menu item to the game. Uh, to do whatever game you already have and with that menu item switches the color palette for a different color palette So we can try applying this right away. So let me copy this one So this is an older version like some in between version from the breakout tutorial I think this doesn't have particles anything. It's just like very simple version of uh, breakout so now we can post a post paste this code in here and now when you run this we have now in the, when you press enter there is a menu that pops up and this menu has a palette um, function when you run this you will see that our game will be all rendered in the completely new color palette uh, every single color has been exchanged um, with its dark version exciting so if you have any games already uh, in the works it's kind of, kind of fun to like paste this code in and see how this works um, there's a bit of an issue here with some of my games I've been working on. So, of course, I was interested to see how My Chance Sweet Buns looks with the new color palette. But the problem with My Chance Sweet Buns is I'm changing the color palette in this already a lot. So that interferes with this code. So you will have to actually go in there and kind of like figure out how things work. Uh, let me see. So what I did here is just like, um, so I understand what I did. Uh, there's a con uh, function called flip pal that kind of just flips the variable that sets if whether um, this alternative color palette should show or not. And then I have here alt pal, that's the function that uh, swaps uh, all the colors in the color palette and, and that's being run every single frame in the draw function. So I draw the entire screen and then I do the uh, color palette switching. So if I manipulate the color palette in between, uh, it resets to this alternative color palette. So all of the all my codes and the palette switching code um, don't interfere with each other, or at least like the palette switching code overrides my manipulation of the color palette. And if you run this, you will see the dark version of my chance sweet buns. Yes! So you see the fading, um, when the game fades, it, um, it switches back, and of course now it also switched back. So now this is the dark version. Anyways, so yeah, this is kind of like fun to experiment just to see, you know, how the new colors look like. Now, there is a bit of an issue here if you look at this, because right now, I mean, we switched the entire color palette to uh, this new color palette. But of course, that's not necessarily how you're supposed to use the new colors. That's not the idea. The idea is that you have now more colors available to choose from to use, you know, in your game. Especially if you look, for example, at My Chance Sweet Buns, I didn't use every color in the available 16 colors. I just like used some colors. I think there is not more like, I don't know, maybe six colors on here. Um, and um, so the idea is the same here. Right? You're not supposed to use, you know, all the new colors, but instead you're supposed to use the 60 old colors, 60 new colors, um, blend together in kind of like a menu and then pick, you know, a couple of colors from this new bigger palette um, to kind of like which one you're going to use in your game. And that's kind of like very complicated and there's we kind of like need to like maybe more tools now to deal with this problem. Of course, you can always do something like S-Sprite and I'm going to try to find an S-Sprite palette for the new color palette and I'm going to put it in doobly-doo so you can load it up in your favorite um, um, pixel art tool and then load the expanded color palette and then you know pick the colors that you need to do your mock-up and then after you've done the mock-up you can then see which color you used and implement that in pico 8. Um, but uh, there's also a really cool tool that i found um, that um, um, that i was really impressed by and that's called the palette maker this is by 2d array and wow that's one hell of a tool. I love it so much. This is incredible. So the idea here is this is a tool made in Pico 8 that allows you to create your own palettes. So you can now pick, you know, all the colors. This You can use one button here to switch between dark and, and, and regular mode. 
So this gives you like an overview of all the available colors. And now you click on a color to, to say like, this is gonna be part of my palette. So for example, I'm gonna pick those two orange ones. I'm gonna switch and I'm gonna pick those maybe. And then maybe this one, right? So now if I press the other button, you will see that I will have like, this is gonna be my color palette. And now even what's something I can do here is kind of, I can rearrange them. So it's kind of like maybe from light to, to dark. Uh, and you know, the um, um, numbers in the top row are kind of like the numbers of the colors of, the, of your color palette. And the numbers in the lower um, row are the colors they were sampled from, like the number of the color that it was taken from. So 135, you know, it's like, it's the dark palette because it's greater than 128. Uh, 10 is from the um, old palette, from the regular palette, nine is from the old regular palette and so forth. Um, uh, so now what you can do is something that this tool does in the background and you have to run it locally. You cannot run it on a website. You have to actually download the card and you know, put it in your cards folder and run it in Pico 8. Because what it does now is in the background, it actually um, creates a code that you can paste in your, in your program. So now it's in my, in my um, clipboard and if I paste, you will see this code will create this palette that I created here, will recreate it in whatever program I'm working on. So I can now go into a different um, program uh, like hero one, whatever, uh, sure, unsafe. And I can paste it in here. And this probably won't work, but let's just try it nonetheless. Oh yeah, see, some colors are different now. Of course, um, uh, Breakout wasn't created from from the scratch to work with this new color palette, so just some colors are swapped. However, um, if um, you can actually look at the, what the code does and you can see that you know it basically takes an array and goes through this array and replaces each color in this array uh, through by the color that is kind of indicated here. So um, if you, you can actually manipulate some stuff and I actually did this to make so to create like a, a Game Boy color palette because I was interested to see how some of my games will look with a Game Boy color palette. So we're gonna go to the code that we already have that kind of like uh, replaces the color palette in every frame. That's this, this code here, I'll pal. I'm gonna paste this, bam. So this is like the big array that replaces all of the colors in the entire color palette of Pico 8 by my um, four <laughs> shades of green uh, to kind of create like a, this kind of like um, Game Boy effect. And I'm gonna quote out the, uh, the old code here. I'm gonna run this. It's Game Boy, my chance, sweet buns. <laughs> Isn't that great? I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this. Okay, yeah. So as you can see, um, this palette tool is incredibly powerful and something I would definitely recommend everybody to just get it. Um, really good work by a 2D array. Um, makes everything so much easier and so sleek, right? It's such a sleek tool where you can, like, especially this part where you just like select some colors and then you can rearrange them. That's really nice because it kind of like gives you the power to, to really control, you know, the order in which colors appear. So yeah, new colors. Um, there is a bit of a controversy that I need to address. Or at least that we should talk about. So um, there has been some people uh, on Twitter, especially, who have issued some um, concerns about this. You know, we have suddenly new colors in Pico 8. Um, we have to remember uh, that um, the constraints that we have here in Pico 8, the fact that we can use only 16 colors, previously we could use only 16 colors, um, that's not something that comes from some hardware or some, some, you know, some technical limitations. That's just like, that's just like a choice by the creator. And that's something that gives Pico 8 its unique identity. So once we start messing around with those limitations, once we start expanding those limitations, we give our developers obviously new tools uh, on their hands to create more stuff, but also we kind of lose or we kind of question what Pico 8 even is. And that's something that Cast Pixel has been very vocal about on, on Twitter. I really appreciate her. She's, she's one of the, um, she's an excellent pixel artist and one of the people who was involved in the development of Pico 8 kind of like a, as an early adopter. 
and she kind of like didn't uh, enjoy the new chorus so much because she raised concerns about you know what even is, is P Two Eight at this point is once we add, start adding more colors, um, um, P Two Eight might lose its identity, and I really appreciate her um, her comments, her concern because. Some, some something something that I really like on on uh, for example if I l watch like hashtags about pixel art on Twitter is I can often just recognize when somebody used the Pico 8 color palette like especially the red in Pico 8 you know that seems to be like such an iconic color and um, it's you can really recognize a, a, um, a Pico 8 game just from the screenshot often. And once we have like a um, new color palette that change that that where new colors come in, suddenly we might not be able to recognize uh, Pico 8 um, games as um, clearly and as um, um, Castpixel put it so succinctly. Um, it kind of like it changes Pico 8 into this uh, yet another canvas, yet another way to put stuff on the screen. Uh, what's what's the point of even using Pico 8 at this point? Why should shouldn't I just go to construct or something, right? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think there's a re um, right and wrong answer. I, it seems like um, um, Zap has been really like careful about how he implements this new feature. Like, it's I kind of, kind of like that it was like a stealth feature, and somebody like it was there for a long time, and somebody just like discovered it <laughs> accidentally. Uh, I, I kind of like that you uh, you can only access it by code, and it's not available there in the editor. So it's kind of like this this secret, like a cheat code. Um, and uh, I kind of like that it, you can't have more than 16 colors on the screen at the same time, uh, unless you do like some flickering stuff or something like this. So you still only have 16 colors. You, you just have like a wider uh, range of colors to choose from to assemble your 16 colors. Um, so it's not, you know, not going completely losing their original identity. There are still some limitations. It's very carefully introduced. Um, but you know, it remains to be like seen like where is this going? And that's basically where we as developers come in. Uh, how are we going to use this feature? Are we going to go completely hog wild and going to completely this uh, you know um, redefine of what Pico eight games are, or are we are we going to like slowly introduce this to kind of like spice up our games, but not necessarily um, question um, Pico 8's identity? And also that's something I would ask you guys. How do you think about new colors? Is that something that you're going to use in your games? Is that something that you're going to use extensively? Or are you just going to like sit back and see what happens? All right, guys, so this is my first video from China. Uh, sorry for not posting for such a long time, but again, things took a while to set up. And we might still be a bit splotchy here because uh, you're still trying, trying to establish kind of like my regular rhythm. Um, but yeah, hopefully there's going to be some more stuff in the future. See you next time around. Bye-bye.